Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we'll get started with LT Spice by actually putting together a voltage divider and running the first simulation. In case you wonder how to install it, please make sure to check out the previous video where we covered all the download and installation process. So to place the first component, you just use a right click and then navigate to draft and then component. As you can see, you can also use F2 to directly get to the component. So LT Spice comes with a preloaded library of all major components. But of course you can import the Spice model from any other manufacturer of any other component into LT Spice and use it for your circuits. Nevertheless, for the moment, the preloaded library will be fine. And we will start with looking for some resistors. So we start typing R and we can already see RES res for resistor. So we'll go ahead and import one of those. So you can move freely on the canvas and just place the component wherever you want by just clicking once you have the position figured out and then you get right away another one which is quite convenient for our use case and we just place the second one. To get rid of the component you just press escape and you're basically free to go. For everybody who's watching from Europe, don't get confused by the icon of the resistor. That's actually the American icon, not the European one but it's basically doing exactly the same, just a different icon. So next up, we want to define some values. And as soon as you hover across the icon, you can already see the message right click to edit. So we do exactly that. And now we can provide a resistance here. And you can see the resistance will be in ohm. So we don't need any unit. So we will start with a traditional one third, two third split. So we just enter 10K and it will automatically adjust this to 10,000 ohms and we do the similar thing for the second one where we go with 20k and there we go that's done so next up we want to connect the two of them so again we go right click draft and there we have wires which you can see you can also access via f3 so let's go for the wires now you get this little kind of target thing that you can see where you are aligned you press one and then you hooked up with the wire and then you press again to basically connect them and you're done. If you want to get rid of it, again, escape and you're free to go. So next up, we need obviously a voltage source. So let's navigate back to the component. I will not use the shortcuts in this video just for you to get familiar with where to go to and that you can actually actively follow what I'm doing. So let's search here. Searching through libraries can be very different depending on who actually released the library. So whatever, when you search for voltage source you could go for vcc this obviously is not really working you could only go for v nothing comes up so let's try voltage and there we go voltage is actually the term that's being used but this can depend on the library that you're using obviously the default one here you go it's voltage but if you load another one it could be different so let's try this one and as you saw maybe before let's navigate back very quickly that this voltage source can be DC or AC or pulse or a bunch of other things. Not that it's of any importance for the moment, but later on we will dig into that. So, all right, let's set up the voltage. Let's go for five volt voltage. And you can also choose a series resistance. So let's assume this is an ideal voltage source for the moment, but later on we will get into using serious resistance of the voltage source, especially when you're having a, any loading chart of a capacitor or something like this, it comes in handy to actually limit your voltage source. But for the moment, five volts, no serious resistance. Again, we need to hook it up. So go back to draft and wire and let's go up here. Now this little target or whatever you want to call it, is actually quite handy that you know when to press again to make actually a turn. Here we go, down here again, one press to hook up, second press to make the turn, another turn and hook it up again. So here we go, that's done. If you would like to run your simulation now, you could press this button and I will quickly do it to show you what happens. It will actually tell you that we are missing the command so there's not still a bunch of stuff to do setting up. And also if you would now set up the command for the simulation, it would also complain because what you always need for a simulation to work is a ground. So adding ground, intuitively you would think it's also a component, 
but it isn't and actually it's pretty difficult to reach. Just to demonstrate this quickly, if you go to the component and you search for G like ground, you can see nothing there. G and D also not, whatever. So actually to get to ground, specifically on Mac, you can press the key G and there we go, automatically the ground comes up. You could also use F4 and once you're on the Mac, if you just press F4, obviously spotlight comes up, but you need to press Fn and then F4, and then you can also set a ground or a comp or whatever you wanna do, but the easiest way is just to press the key on the keyboard the key G, and there you go. So again, we wanna hook it up with a wire, and here that's a bit weird. If you wanna connect two wires, you would expect some sort of uh, kind of icon or little animation popping up that you're actually hooking this up and not just crossing through, but that's actually not the case. As soon as you press it, you just need to make sure that you are aligned and then this little whatever dot is actually coming up and you're connected. In case you have two separate circuits or something, it will ask you if you want to merge the nets, but in case you're hooking up brown, it will just automatically do it. So all right, we're all set up and now if you want to simulate again it's complaining about not having any command and again that's where it's getting a bit weird i mentioned this in the first video it's super horrible to interact with the software on a mac the windows interface is actually better but it's actually it's let's say everything is there it's just more complicated to get there but here we are so we need to deal with it so just bear with me to get to the menu where you can set up the parameters for the simulation so this would be a right click. Then you go down here to draft again, and then you find here spice directive. Sounds pretty cool. And that's actually also kind of true because that's basically where you set up all the parameters of the different type of simulation. So basically the core of the spice model. Once you're here, you can now basically type down in terminal style your command or your simulation parameter. If you know the spice, let's say the spice language, similar to maybe and SQL language or any coding language. But since we don't know it, we would like to have some graphical interface and actually there is one, but you see no button again, but just always keep in mind, it's always a hidden menu. So just go right click and there you can have help me edit and then analysis CMD. So that's, I know it's super crazy. So first you need to right click, then go to draft spice directive to actually arrive at this menu. And then you need to go right click again in this little text box, which is kind of like a terminal style way to code in your simulation. And then you go for help me and then you go for an analysis CMD. And then another hidden menu pops up. So don't ask me why there's not just a simple button to get here. Anyway, I will stop complaining. That's how you get there. And there you can see you have the transient analysis, the AC analysis, the DC sweep, and so on and so on and so on. So depending on what you wanna do. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a transient analysis. I will make sure you have a video online for every single analysis here. I guess the most common one is the AC analysis, the DC sweep and actually the transient analysis if you have any components that are actually factoring in here. So since we're having not any time sensitive components in here, it's basically a simulation at the operation point, but that's all we are aiming for at the moment. So just select one second, for example, for the stop time, that will be enough. We will not have to define anything like the size of the time step or any of those menus here. One second is perfectly fine. And what's actually cool is that you can see down here in real time, once we're typing something here, that this kind of command for this terminal style input is created in real time. So you can actually learn as you go. So as you see, once we change something here, it's immediately changing down there. So I don't think that's like something you would like easily learn completely what actually the command is, but at least to edit something quickly, like you, next time you come to this menu, wanna like extend the time to two seconds, you know right away I can just change the number here and you don't need to head back to the menu where we just came from, which is again, right click, help me edit, analysis, CMD, to get back to this menu. Once you have everything set up here, you hit OK, and now you get the simulation parameter like a component. You can just click anywhere where it's convenient, so I will place it here. 
and now we're basically good to go. We can go up here to the upper left corner, hit the little guy running and that's it. Analysis was running. As you can see, you can see nothing um, because we are still missing what we actually want to analyze. To do so, we can hover with the mouse over our circuit and actually press where we want to analyze something. If we press directly on a component, it will show us the current. Let me set up this a little bit better for you quickly. Here we go. If you hit another co component, we will get another signal again, the current, which is obviously the same since it's in serious connection. If we press between two elements, it will measure the voltage against ground. So let's do that. Here we go. You can see we added another line here and we will also want to measure here, which is obviously the supply voltage. So we have the complete voltage drop over here, which is here referred to VN001. And that's up here. We can barely see it. Five volts, obviously. And then we have this position here where we have VN002, which is 3.3 volts roughly. And then obviously for the current, we have a second scale on the right hand side where we can see that we have around 0.2 milliamp, which is the blue line here. And actually also the green one, which sits right behind it. As you can see, we have kind of like an offset here with the voltage. If you don't like this, we can hit on the scale here, right click, and there we can see like set it up to logarithmic, have the top value, value defined and the bottom volume, value defined. I actually will go for 5.5 volts as the value for the top one that we can see the, the 5 volt line a little bit better and for the bottom one for 0 volts. We hit OK and there we go. Now we can properly see the upper line, the 5 volts for this position here and we can now also see like a bit better the perspective this nice one third, two third distribution of our voltage divider right here. As mentioned before, the time does basically nothing because it is obviously a non-time sensitive circuit. I want to show you one more thing here. In case you don't like pressing the buttons here on those different elements, it's kind of helpful because you know where the line is coming from, especially those names are not really telling you a lot. But so once you press it, you know where it's coming from. That's cool. But in case that's not your thing, there's another option. You could press this button right here, the second one on from the right or basically next to the tool. And there you could see all the signals that you could measure. I think that's sometimes helpful if you don't know what you actually could measure there. So as you go across here, now it's a bit pointless because we have everything already inside, but you could basically select all the signals that you want to have there. And again, it's like in real time, writing the actual command. So let's just select everything here. We have one that is unique that we haven't had before, which is the amperage from the voltage supply, but it's obviously also the same amperage, the same current. One more we could do is the time, even though we have it already on the X axis, but that's actually a funny one. So let's press OK. And now we get this nice little extra chart of the time, because obviously once every 0 0.1 seconds, we get one 0 0.2 second more. So Again, a bit pointless, but you get the idea. So that's all for today's video. Basically just covering the basics, how to set up a circuit, how to analyze, how to set up an actual simulation. Just did the simulation at the operating point using the transient analysis. Next time we will dig a bit deeper in a transient analysis using a capacitor and a time sensitive component. Make sure to be subscribed. Don't miss on this one. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you next time.